Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasovic and in this video I'm going to dive into filtering data, a crucial feature for building efficient and user-friendly APIs. But I'm not stopping there, I'll also show you how to seamlessly integrate this filtering functionality with the pagination feature I implemented in my previous video. By the end of this video, you'll have a robust API that not only filters data, but also delivers it in a paginated format, ensuring optimal performance and a great user experience. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports this channel as well. So let's get started. Filtering is a mechanism for retrieving results based on a specific criteria. You can create various types of filters to refine results by class property, value range, date range, or other attributes. When implementing filtering, you are always limited to a predefined set of options that can be included in a request. For example, you might be able to filter employees by date of hire, but sending a random date value without context wouldn't be useful. On the front end, filtering is typically implemented using checkboxes, radio buttons, or drop downs. This approach restricts users to only the available options, ensuring they create valid filters. Okay, with this in mind, I can start with the filtering implementation. I have a prepare project with pagination already implemented from the previous video. And if you didn't watch that one, the link will be in the description below. Now, I will introduce a new feature to my API to work together with pagination. Let's say we want to find out which employees are between the ages of 26 and 29. We also want to be able to enter just the starting age and not the ending one and vice versa. In the previous video, I used the Employees Parameters class, which inherits from the Request Parameters class to define the query parameters for our paging request. It is empty because I didn't have any specific parameters for this class, but that's about to change. First, I will add a new property, mean age, which represents the minimum age an employee must have to be included in the results. I use unsigned in here because age should always be a positive number. Next, let's introduce the max age property, which sets an upper limit for the employee's age. By default, I initialize it to int max value to ensure that if no maximum age is specified, the filter includes all ages. Finally, I will add a computed property, valid age range. This property ensures that the max age value is greater than mean age. If max age is less than or equal to mean age, the filtering conditions would be invalid. This property will help prevent incorrect filtering requests. Now, just a quick note, this is something I cover in my Web API Online Text course, which we recently published alongside our microservices and Blazor WebAssembly courses. So feel free to check out our new platform and explore all the courses available. Okay, now that I have parameters ready, I can modify the getEmployeesAsyncService method by adding a validation check as a first statement. So I will simply check if the valid age range property is false. And if it is, we can handle the error response. As I have explained in the previous video, and you still see the comment here, you can do it in any way you want. Exception flow, result pattern, discriminated unions, you name it. You will find the links to the videos in the description below that cover all the mentioned topics. Now, with this done, I can open the repository class. This method works perfectly with pagination logic, but now I have to include the filtering logic as well and introduce some changes to get the correct results. So first, I will create a query and store it inside the employee's query variable. Then, I will cut this find by condition part from here and paste it here. I also have to extend the query by checking the age property if it is greater than or equal to the mean age property and also if the same age property is less than or equal to the max age property. So you see I didn't execute the query yet, it is just prepared. Now to continue, I will cut the counting logic from here, paste it right below the query and modify the logic by counting only the records from the created query. I can use the query here 
and leave the rest the same. Great. You see, I don't have to change anything in my controller or any other place. With all this done, I can run the app and test the logic. First, I will try to find all the employees per a given company with a minimum age of 32. Excellent, we see two results and the employees are 32 or older. Next, let's test with only max age set to 27. And we can see three results. To continue, I can test this with both min age and max age property set. And you can see results sorted by name with the age between assigned values. Finally, I can combine filtering with pagination where I will ask for the first page with a page size of 3 and minimal age of 26 and a maximum age of 30. This time we see three results on the first page. But if we check the headers tab, we can see there are two more pages and the total count of employees is 7. Since we are on the first page, we don't have the previous one, but we have the next pages. Excellent. And that's it. In this video, I enhanced my API to support filtering while keeping pagination intact. By restructuring the query, I made it more efficient and easier to manage, ensuring that filtering, pagination, and in the future videos searching and sorting all work seamlessly together. This approach gives clients more flexibility when requesting data while keeping the API clean and efficient. So, thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, feel free to leave any questions or feedback in the comments. So, see you in the next video, and until then, all the best.